So in this video, I'm going to take a look at Kirchhoff's laws, both his current law and his potential difference law, and then look at how it applies to the specific case of potential dividers. So what Kirchhoff's current law states is that the sum of currents entering a junction is equal to the sum of the currents leaving a junction. So essentially, this is an expression of conservation of charge, which you'll learn about in the other part of unit one. So it's the conservation of charge, essentially. And if we look at examples of this, so look at this diagram here on the left, we can see that going around here, if we ignore our voltmeters which are using to monitor potential difference, we have a series circuit. So what Kirchhoff's current law suggests is that this current is constant in a series circuit. So if you go all the way around here, if we put an ammeter anywhere around here, you would get the same value of current throughout because there's no splitting of the circuit, so each junction is just one input, one output, essentially. If you look at this one over here, we have this point, and this point here, where you get a splitting and combining. So if we expand those a little bit, so essentially what we're going to have is, let's say that's I1, this one is I2, and this one is I3. So going into this junction here, we've got I1, and then going out, we have I3 and I2. So essentially, the what this law suggests is that the current going in, I1, is equal to the current going out, which is I2 plus I3. And that is the expression that Kirchhoff's law is giving you in this particular circuit. So let's move on and look at his potential difference law. And again, we're going to look at the same two circuits. So the first of his voltage laws or potential difference laws is that the sum of EMFs in a loop is equal to the sum of the potential differences. So if we look at this one here, the only source of EMF is this cell, which is going to be V0. So that's your sum of your EMFs. When it says it's going to equal to the sum of the potential drops, so we have two of those, V1 and V2, which means in a series circuit, essentially, you're just going to add up all the, all the potential differences here, here, have to be equal to the EMF and the battery. That one's a fairly common sense one. But then you get this problem of, well, what if we have a split in our circuit like before? So essentially, in this circuit down here, we actually have two loops. So if we start from the cell, we'll trace one of the loops, one of the loops, it always goes through the lamp, whichever route you're on. One loop will go round this way and go around there. The second loop will come down this way and it will go round this one. So this circuit is made of two loops. And what his second law suggests is that when you have two loops like this, the potential difference across components in parallel loops is the same. So essentially, if you measure this V here, and you measure this V here, what you'll find is V1 is equal to V2. That's how you express that law there. And then if you work out the combined resistance of this, it turns into a potential divider. We'll get onto that next. So those are the three key laws that you need to know about. So let's look at applying those with a potential divider. So this is your most basic potential divider circuit. So what you've got is a source of EMF up here, which we've said is V0, and we've got two resistors in series with each other, and we're monitoring the potential difference across these. So what we're interested in doing is expressing V1 in terms of R1. So if we remember, say that we've got a current I1 going around this, and remembering it's a series circuit, which means it to be the same throughout. So we can express V1 using Ohm's law in terms of I and R. And likewise with V2, 
we can express it as I R2. So next thing is to remember the potential difference rule. So we know that V0 is equal to the V1 plus V2, because they're in the same loop, which is I R1 plus I one R two which is equal to I one R one plus R two. Once we factorized it out there. So if we then then want to work out what essentially what fraction we're gonna get for each of the resistors, so if resistor one is gonna get V one, the fraction of that is going to be R1 from the top expression over I1 so then we can actually cancel out current so we know when we're looking at potential dividers current isn't actually a factor and you most often we see this expressed like this I ran out of space there, so I just moved it down here. So this is the most common form you see the potential divider in, because this is usually something you know, and these resistances are something you usually know. So you can work out the potential drop across each of the resistors that you're looking at here. And if you wanted to do it for V2, you would just simply swap out V1 for V2, and then R1 for R2, and you could work out what the V2 was also. So that's if there's two resistors. What if there's more resistors? So let's go through the same logic again. So we know V1 is equal to I R1. And we think that's going to apply to these other ones as well. We can get an expression for our V0 in terms of I, I'll just factorize it straight away. This expression here. And once again, we can get this expression like we had before. So it doesn't matter how many you have in your potential divider, all that happens is that you change this bottom line so you add more resistors onto the bottom line, otherwise this equation ends up exactly the same. So let's look at well, how you would actually apply this to a question. So first of all, rule of potential dividers. When you recognize the question that you need potential dividers for, never talk about the current. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is, See rule number one, never, ever, ever talk about the current. This is the trap students fall into all the time. They try and talk about current in a potential divider, and you really can't do that because you're essentially talking about how the potential difference is shared between these two. You don't really know what's going to be going on with the current here. So let's look at this question. So you state and explain what you'd expect to see as the resistance of the variable resistor is decreased. So key points to pick out is the first one that struck me is the way the question says what you'd expect to see if the things you can see in this circuit would be this light bulb here so essentially what it's asking you to do is talk about what you'd see from the light bulb okay and the next thing is your variable resistor is going to be decreasing here so let's do some quick analysis so our variable resistor is in this part here and if we want to, essentially, we want to get an expression for this lot as a whole because it's quite annoying to have it in two. So, using our parallel resistor rule, so 
So what you can actually see here is that as this variable resistor is decreased, the resistance of this whole network of resistors here, this parallel network, is also going to decrease. Okay? So, what does that mean? Well, if we call that V2, as your the resistance of your variable resistor goes down, your resistance of total is going to go down, which means your V2 is going to go down. And you also know that using your voltage law that V0 is equal to V1 plus V2, which means that your V1 has to increase if you reduce V2. So what does that mean? Well, in terms of what you'd see, a light bulb, its brightness depends on the power that it's dissipating. So, let's remember the equation. So power, you can use I squared R, but in this case we're more interested in V squared over R. And it's going to be V1. So if you increase V1, essentially what that means is that the power is going to increase. Now you might argue that if you increase the power you're going to make it hotter so the resistance is going to increase, but the voltage is increased by, I'm oh sorry, the potential difference is increased by a factor of a square, so that's going to be the more significant term. So as V1 goes up, P is also going to go up. So then in terms of coming back to what the question asked you, that means it's going to get brighter. So the more power a light bulb is dissipating, that means there's more energy being transferred from your potential energy in your battery into light energy, if you like, at your cell per second. So you're going to see that in terms of more photons being emitted, it's going to look brighter. And that is, so first of all, this will be stating what you'd see, that it will get brighter, and it's going through these stages here, and then finally up to this one, that is explaining what you would see there.